this examination of the warning about the beauty cloak in Genesis 3 is not affiliated with any religion or doctrine. It's my own work and it's under copyright. In the previous video, we looked at Genesis 3 verses 1 through 7, which explains how one of the Yahweh using the image disguise told the Isha hybrids about the cloaking technology that would make them appear beautiful, and they used it. We also found confirmation of that technology in Isaiah 3 and Lamentations 2. And we also looked at when the text indicate this technology is being used at the time period. In this video, we'll look at Genesis 3, verses 8 through 16, and we'll find out why the Elohim forbid the use of the shaft, and we'll find more confirmation of the time period the texts indicate this is happening. The recent occurrence seems to have started in 1947. So verse 8 in the King James translation says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The word translated as voice, number 6963, also means sound. We know the word translated as Lord, number 3068, is Yahweh. The word God, number 430, is Elohim. The word translated as walking, number 1980, also means go. The word translated as garden, number 1588, also means enclosure. The word translated as cool, number 7307, also means wind. The word translated as Adam, number 120, means human being or humans. The word translated as wife, number 802, is the Hebrew word isha, which the text make clear cannot be human, but instead means certain one, and in this case refers to a hybrid that the Yahweh made. The word translated as presence, number 6440, also means countenance, and the definition of countenance is appearance. The word translated as amongst, number 8432, also means through. The word translated as trees, number 86086, also means shaft. So verse 8 can also say, They heard the sound of the Yahweh Elohim going into the enclosure, the wind. In those days, the humans and the Isha hid their appearance like the Yahweh Elohim through the shaft of the enclosure. Then verse 9 in the King James translation says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? The word translated as called, number 7121, also means become famous. The word translated as said, number 559, also means consider. And the word translated as where art thou, number 335, also means why. So verse 9 can also say, the Yahweh Elohim became famous and the humans considered why. So I know this is shocking, just please bear with me because this fame is confirmed later in Genesis 3 and it's also in Genesis 6. In Genesis 6, 4, it says there were giants in the earth in those days when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them. The same became men of renown. And this word translated as renown, number 8034, also means famous. So Genesis 6 says the sons of God and or the children of the sons of God became famous, and it's talking about the Nephilim here. The word translated as giants, number 5303, is the word that means Nephilim, and it stems from the word number 5307, which means to fall or be cast down. And we know the word Yahweh stems from word 1961, which also means fall out. That's also confirmed in Genesis 11, verses 6 and 7. The Lord said, let us go down. That's Yahweh. So I do believe this is a, there's a deeper layer of meaning here in Genesis 3, verse 9. The Yahweh became famous and the humans considered why. Also, the first part of Genesis 3 and verse 6 already told us the Isha discovered that the shaft can make them have success by making them appear beautiful. It says, and when the Isha saw that the shaft was a good provision and that he or she was pleasant to the eyes and it was a shaft to be desired to make one have success. 
So verse 9 adds a new detail to that. It says, first, the Yahweh became famous and the humans pondered about how or why that happened. They knew the Yahweh was using the shaft and they heard the sound of it. It sounded like wind. So they considered if that had something to do with their fame. Then verse 10 in the King James translation says, And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. We know the word translated as said, number 559, also means consider. The word translated as voice, number 6963, also means sound. The word translated as garden, number 1588, also means enclosure. And notice the word translated as I, number 595, is the Hebrew word anoki in the Bible Study Tools Concordance, and it also means which. But in the Bible Hub lexicon of this verse, the word ki is used instead, and it means when. Then the word translated as naked, number 5903, also means nakedness. And the word translated as hid myself, number 2244, also means hidden. So verse 10 can also say, They considered the sound they heard in the enclosure and were afraid when the nakedness was hidden. Then verse 11 in the King James translation says, And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded that thee should not eat? We know the word translated as said, number 559, also means consider. The word translated as who, number 4310, also means how. The word translated as told, number 5046, also means explain. The word translated as eaten, number 398, also means use. And word translated as tree, number 6086, also means shaft. So verse 11 can also say, they considered how to explain the nakedness, and they used the shaft that they were commanded not to use. Then verse 12 in the King James translation says, And the man said, The woman whom thou gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. The word translated as man, number 120, means human being or humans. The word translated as said, number 559, also means asked. The word translated as woman, number 802, is the word isha, which refers to the hybrid. The word translated as with me, number 5978, means with. The word translated as she, number 1931, means he or she. The word translated as tree, number 6086, means shaft. And the word translated as eat, number 398, also means use. So verse 12 can also say, the humans asked the Isha that was given to be with them if he or she would give them the shaft to use. Then verse 13 in the King James translation says, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The word translated as said, number 559, also means told. The word translated as woman, number 802, is the word Isha, which is the hybrid. The word translated as serpent, Number 5175 means image. The word translated as beguiled me, number 5377, means deceive. And the word translated as eat, number 398, also means use. So verse 13 can also say, The Yahweh Elohim told the Isha what it does, so the Isha said, The image deceives, and let them use it. Then verse 14 in the King James translation says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. So we know the word translated as Lord, number 3068, is Yahweh. The word translated as God, number 430, is Elohim. The word translated as serpent, number 5175, is image. The word translated as thou, number 859, mean, means you. The word translated as done, number 6213, also means make. The word translated as cattle, number 929, also means mount. 
The word translated as beast, number 2416, also means appetite. The word translated as field, number 7704, also means land. The word translated as go, number 3212, also means carry. And the word translated as eat, number 398, also means use. So verse 14 can also say, Then to the Yahweh the Elohim said, The image you made is a curse. It will cause a mount of appetite in the land, and their belly will carry dust if they use it all the days of their life. In this verse, it makes more sense that the Elohim is talking to the Yahweh because the texts tell us the Yahweh are the beast who made the image in order to deceive. Also in number 8 here, Deuteronomy 32 tells us the name Yahweh was published and given credit for what the Elohim did and what the Elohim said. Jeremiah 8 tells us the texts were altered. That tells us there are cases where the name Yahweh was inserted into these texts where it does not belong. So we need to examine the context and we need to examine the other books of the Bible in order to find the truth. Another reason it makes more sense in verse 14 that the Elohim are warning the Yahweh about the image the Yahweh made is verse 3 tells us it was the Elohim who commanded them not to use the shaft. So the Elohim, the creators, are now about to explain in verses 14 through 19 why they said in verse 3 that the use of the shaft will cause the humans to perish. In verse 14, they say the image is a curse because it causes a mount of appetite in the land and their belly will carry dust if they use it all the days of their life. The Mount of Appetite is explained in Isaiah 3 and Lamentations 2. We looked at this in a previous video. Isaiah 3 says the daughter of Zion leads the decline down the throat of an open grave with seductive appearance, and the Adonai will take away their beauty. Lamentations 2 says something similar. The Adonai will cast down the beauty and slay all those pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. We looked at this in the previous video. It's talking about the removal of the image technology. It also mentions in the same chapter, Lamentations 2, that the Isha are eating the fruit and having children. In other words, they are using the reward and having children. Genesis 3 told us the reward is the image that makes them appear beautiful. That explains why verse 4 in Lamentations 2 says all those pleasant to the eye will be slain. It's referring to the image technology. If we continue to read the book of Genesis, we're told the humans and the Isha hybrids go on to have children together. Genesis 2 verse 23 says the flesh of this one shall be chosen. The Isha will marry the humans. In Jude 1, it talks about the strange flesh. It says in excerpts of verses 4 through 8, there are certain men crept in unawares, the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. These filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Okay, so now we understand why the flesh is described as strange. It's a light technology. It's not real. Jude 1 seems to be referring to the Nephilim in Genesis 6 verse 4, the sons of God that marry the daughters of men and have children with them. In the book of Hosea, it talks about the strange children that are begotten in Israel, and Jesus told us true Israel represents the whole world. In Hosea 5, excerpts of verses 3, 5, and 7 say, Israel is defiled. Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity, Judah also. They have begotten strange children. Now shall a month devour them. Then in Hosea 7, it says in excerpts of verses 1, 8, and 9, they commit falsehood and the thief comes in. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Strangers have devoured his strength and he knoweth it not. Hosea 9 verse 12 says, Though they bring up their children, there shall not be a man left. Then in Hosea 10 verses 9 and 13, it says, O Israel, you have sinned, you have eaten the fruit of lies. And that explains why Genesis 2, 17 and 3, 3 say the Elohim told them if they use the shaft, they would perish. 
because it disrupts the natural mating process of humans, which results eventually in the domination of the non-human species. In Genesis 2.17, it says, But of the shaft of harmful prosperity, you shall not use it. For in the day that you use it, you will surely die. We know one day is a thousand years. So it may be saying in Genesis 2.17 that a thousand years of mating with the Isha hybrids will cause the humans to cease to exist in their original state. So now Genesis 3.14 makes more sense. To the Yahweh, the Elohim said, The image you made is a curse. It will cause a mount of appetite in the land, and their belly will carry dust if they use it all the days of their lives. The be their belly will carry dust. In other words, they will become infertile eventually. The Elohim continue their warning about this technology in verse 15. In verse 15 in the King James translation says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The words, and I will, are not in the Hebrew, and the word enmity means hostility. The word translated as woman, number 802, we know is the word isha, which is the hybrid. The word translated as seed, number 2233, also means offspring. And the word translated as heel, number 6119, means heel, footprint, or footsteps. It's talking about the heel of the foot. So verse 15 can also say, It will put hostility between the Isha and their offspring, and their offspring will bruise the head and bruise the heel of the foot. This ties into Isaiah 1 which also talks about the daughter of Zion. It says in excerpts of verses 6 through 8, From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. Your land, strangers, devour it in your presence. It is desolate, as overthrown by strangers, and the daughter of Zion is left as a besieged city. It's talking about the offspring of the Isha. From the sole of the foot to the head, there are bruises. It's a reference to Genesis 3.15, which we're told refers to the offspring of the hybrids and describes the ramifications of using the shaft of harmful prosperity, the image. This also ties into the book of Daniel. Daniel 2 tells us the head of the image represents Babylon, and the feet of the image represents the final world government that will be destroyed by a giant meteorite. In our close examination of that, we discovered that it appears we are in Daniel's feet phase right now, which Daniel specifically said will be the time when they mingle with the seed of men. So we'll add that to the timing references. The offspring of the hybrids will bruise the head and the feet. That is the fourth reference to the feet that we found. And because of Daniel, number six here, we were given an exact time period in which the feet occur during the fourth empire at the rise of the little horn. And Daniel confirmed they will mingle with the seed of humans during the feet. So that's five references to the, to the time period of the feet so far. Number five, the marriage between the humans and the Isha is the bones of the feet. Number six, the feet occur at the end when the little horn rises. Number 12 here, the daughter of Zion leads the decline into the grave with seductive appearance at the rattling of the feet. That's Isaiah 3, which gives us more phrases for the image technology than any other chapter so far. Number 13, the offspring of the hybrids will bruise the head and the feet. And that tells us who Daniel referred to in number 14 when he said they will mingle with the seed of humans. So we'll add that here as well. The hybrid offspring bruise the head, Babylon, and the feet, which is the time period we're in now. Then verse 16 in the King James translation says, And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. The word translated as woman, number 802, we know is Isha, refers to the hybrid. The word translated as sorrow, number 6093, also means pain. The word translated as conception, number 2032, also means pregnancy. And the word translated as husband, number 376, also means human being or humans. So verse 16 can also say, And to the Isha they said, It will greatly multiply the pain of pregnancy and pain when you bring forth children, and they will desire to rule over the humans. So the children of the hybrids will desire to rule over the humans. That makes sense. This is also confirmed in Isaiah 3. 
verses 4 and 5, I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. So you can pause to read this if you want. This is Genesis 3, an alternate translation, verses 1 through 16. Next week, we'll look at the last section of Genesis 3. This is obviously not the only possible translation, but there are basic points that repeat over and over throughout the text. The Yahweh wear a clothing of light. That's number seven here. And that clothing of light is the image. It was made for the Yahweh by the Yahweh. Then the Isha hybrids and the humans with them got a hold of it. Its use was forbidden by the creators because it interferes with the human lineage. If the cloak is worn all the days of their lives, they will become infertile eventually, probably because there are non-human hybrids mixing their genetics into the line and no one is aware of it because they can't see them for what they are because they're wearing the cloak of light disguise. The cloak of beauty. And all of this is apparently happening right now during our time. So if you want more information, the whole series playlist, Bible's Countdown to the Asteroid, is linked here. And there are several other videos linked in the description below. Just click on Show More to open up more links on this subject. If you like this video and you want me to continue this work, please consider providing support. I can't, I really, truly cannot do this without your help. So thank you to everyone who is making this possible because I don't know of anyone else who has discovered this information. I hope you're doing well and I'll talk to you next week.